Hey guys, today I'm painting a simple pink flamingo. This one is in real time, so grab your paints and follow along. Before we dive in, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Okay, I'm gonna show you the colors I have in my palette first. Uh, the ones I'm gonna use today are, this is Holbein Scarlet Lake, and this one is Holbein Vermilion Hue. And then I might dip into my indigo a little bit today. And some of these other colors are just left over from a different painting, but we'll see if I need them or not. I've already lightly sketched on my flamingo and it's on an 11 by 14 inch sheet of Fabriano Artistico hot pressed paper. And I made it a very large piece of paper because I think it'll be a fun thing to frame and maybe put in a beach house. So, all right, let's get started. I'm watering down my Scarlet Lake a little bit and just mixing that up. This one is a little bit pinker than the vermilion hue, but I wanted to have one that was a little bit pinker and one that's more orange. And so I'm actually gonna start by painting wet on dry. So we're gonna start with the top of the head and just make some broad brush strokes, just avoiding the eye for now. And allowing that paint to just bloom and bleed together. Carefully following the shape of our flamingo's curving neck. My paper is on a angled board right now. It's slightly tilted at an angle and that's allowing my paint to flow downward a little bit easier. I'm grabbing a little bit of the vermilion hue. Again, this is a little bit orangier. And I'm kind of stopping my paint line here where the feathers start to change. And then while this is still wet, I'm gonna grab some almost pure vermilion and just go in a little bit darker where there's a shadow on the neck. I'm just barely touching the paper with my brush, just letting the paint blend and bleed on its own. And then we'll add some more vermilion hue down here in the bottom of the feathers. Another section that's brightly tinted that I'm gonna use this pretty much straight from the tube paint is on the wing feathers just above this hind leg. I'm just gonna paint that in as brightly as possible. This is with the vermilion hue. Just avoiding a couple of lighter feathers that are overlapping slightly. Okay, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is water down my paint quite a bit and we're gonna go much, much lighter and paint an overall feather color inside of the body. Just a really light pink. This will be kind of a base layer for the darker feathers that'll go on top.
And then we'll use that same watered down paint in the white portion of the beak. Coming almost right up to that black part where the crease of the mouth begins, but not quite. So while this is drying, I'm going to come in with the legs, do the legs here. I'm going to zoom in, zoom out just slightly so you can see the bottom of this foot. And this is where I'm going to use a little bit of that indigo. Just going to mix that indigo with my vermilion and it creates this almost purple color. And we're going to use that to paint in a base layer on these long skinny legs. Even on a fairly large sheet of paper, this is an 11 by 14, these details feel fairly tiny. Flamingos are quite delicate. I'm going to go a little bit darker as I come down the leg. This one is in shadow. And I'll try to do this in as quick of a brush stroke as possible, like a flat wash so it has no hard edges. If you're enjoying this video and you want to take your watercolor skills to the next level, click on the link in the description to access all of my full-length narrated real-time tutorials. I'm adding new content every month. And while you're there, you can download my free watercolor jumpstart guide. Okay, let's get back to the video. In the foot, I'm not going to put much detail in there at all. Just enough detail to show its contours a little bit. I think that's plenty. And I'm coming back in with some darker indigo and painting the toes. I've just added a shadow to that leg that's curving behind the bird. And a nice deep shadow using indigo. Right here. And with just those few brush strokes, our legs of the bird are done. Okay, so the wings have dried enough that we can start going back in with some more detail. And for that, all I'm going to do is take my pinkier color, my more reddish Scarlet Lake color. And we're just going to go in and add some of these really vibrant colors in the wings. I'm 
You might want to water it down a little bit so it's not quite as bright as this area as that is going to be the brightest section of the bird. Just painting on a few prominent individual feathers. You can see they curve around in the shape of the bird's body. I'm grabbing a touch of this uh, buff titanium that's on my palette, it's a little more yellowish, and I'm bringing that in to the feathers along the back. colors are just so much fun to paint with and you don't have to have these exact same colors to create a convincing flamingo as long as you have some sort of pink a vibrant watermelon color it'll look like a flamingo now these feathers are angling upward more and they come in and overlap the back of the bird. So I'm just negative painting around a few of those to show their points. The fun thing about flamingos is that they really are pretty easy to paint with watercolor and you can be loose and brushy with them and they'll look so pretty. All right, I don't want to overwork this at all, so just maybe a couple more brush strokes and we'll call that good. Add some cool hints of shadow beneath the bird. And then maybe a little darker shadow here where the neck curves over the back. Then I just reinforce that edge with another stroke of vermilion hue. And I'm now darkening around the eye socket. And I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush for the details in the beak. This is a tiny size one Richeson real squirrel hair brush. And I'm just gonna try this one out for those teeny tiny little eye details. Grabbing my indigo. Okay, I've zoomed in a bit so you can see that better. And again, I'm taking my tiny, tiny brush and I'm just gonna paint in a little circle shape for the eye and a tiny dot inside that circle. And then along the beak. <laughs> the thing about a tiny brush is it runs out of paint really fast, so you have to keep reloading pretty often.
And we'll do the bottom of the beak where the black continues. I'm using indigo, actually, not really true black. And then let's add a little more. Just another very light watered down layer of this orangey, orangey pink to the beak. And it just touched that indigo, and so that's all just blending wildly together. I think that looks good. And then for our final detail, I'm just going to paint in the shadow along the inside of the leg. And I'm just grabbing, again, my watered-down red tone and going in on the right side with a swooping motion, we're going to try to do this all in one quick stroke down to the foot. I'm just adding a little bit of these vertical stripings through the leg. Touch of indigo in there while that's still wet. And that's our flamingo. Now at this point, if you want, you can go in and add some fun spatter effects. Totally up to you. I actually rather like the simplicity of my stark flamingo on a white background. So I think I'm going to leave them like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. And if you decided to try this painting, I'd love to see it. Tag me on Instagram and let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or questions. I'm always looking for new ways to improve my channel and bring you the best tutorials possible. Check out these other real-time tutorials and just keep painting.